Hello friends, in this video tutorial we will be talking about the plant biotechnology and most importantly uh, the agrobacteria mediated gene transfer in plant biotechnology and how we can achieve the successfully trans uh, production of transgenic plant. Okay. Now uh, for from the first base first few slides actually uh, we are going to present the basics of plant biotechnology that means uh, utilizing different vectors vector mediated gene transfer or naked DNA transfer then different types of vectors and uh, how we can modify those vectors what are the ingredients of the vectors and uh, what why we at all need the modifications in them and all these things and after that we'll talk about the natural uh, agrobacterium mediated gene transfer in plant and then we'll talk about uh, the synthetic method of gene transfer in plant cells okay now classification of marker genes now remember in the very first beginning what are marker genes and what are uh, other types of genes now marker genes typically are those kind of genes which mark the presence of a particular gene sequence inside the genome okay for example, suppose we are having uh, our gene of desire. Now we need uh, the expression of that gene into a host organism. Now we must attach a type of gene which are called the marker genes with those uh, gene, of our gene of our desire. Because if the gene of our desire enters the host cell, definitely the marker gene must enter. And as a result, this marker gene expression will give us the proof that our gene is actually transformed, or our gene is actually transferred from uh, from our system to the desired host system. Okay. Now there are several different marker genes here. So actually, marker genes can be divided into two parts one is selectable markers another one is the screening markers the type of marker I have talked about is called the selectable uh, uh, the type of gene I have talked about is called the screening marker uh, or called the reporter genes that report you the presence of a particular uh, desired sequence inside the genome but there are other type of markers they are called the selectable markers that means those are the genes which help us to identify or select our desired host uh, organism or our desired product for example let me take a color first uh, okay fine okay, good now suppose we are having our uh, desired host organism and inside this host bacterium we need to insert uh, some gene for example uh, the gene for the production of uh, lactose lactose okay so it can break down the lactose so what we can do we incorporate that gene with our uh, vector so we are having the vector we are having the DNA vessel so inside this DNA vessel we are having the gene so let me change another color so this is the gene of lactose so we give that gene and we also uh, attach another gene say this black color gene here so this is the marker gene here okay now uh, then we do the transformation and as a result of transformation sorry as a result of transformation what we will end up with we end up with the production of sorry okay. we end up with the production of this bacteria and inside them our gene is inserted or not so we need to be sure whether our gene is inserted or not if we provide only this short sequence with our desired gene without any kind of marker gene so right after this transformation we cannot say that whether the gene is incorporated or not either this gene uh, or this can incorporate but we want the proof that whether uh, our desired gene is incorporated or not or our desired product is expressed or not so for finding them we must attach this marker gene which is in black color now as a result of the attachment of the marker gene for example say uh, the colony of this bacteria will change color or something like that so from thousands of different colonies in agar plate we can distinguish our desired product which will be different in color sometimes sometimes different in enzymatic activities and all these things we can assay those things and and can take up our desired product from other products okay so that's how the importance of selectable markers come in and uh, screening markers are those markers which is help us to screen uh, between different types of marker elements okay so these are called the screening markers different types of uh, elements for example there are thousand different types of uh, 
expression types now from those expression types we need to screen a particular particular one type of uh, species we can screen through this type of markers which i call the reporter genes that means suppose we are having 100 different types of uh, variations there now from this 100 different variations we want only that variation which will change in color but not change in enzymatic activity or not change in any other things so we can screen uh, using uh, the the property of changing color from this sequence and you can get it okay now characteristics of ideal reporter genes now there are three major characteristics for ideal reporter gene first is the detection with high sensitivity we uh, we must detect them with high sensitivity second thing is there should be a quantitative assay available for uh, for uh, knowing the presence of that marker gene and third thing is the assay should be uh, require a minimal amount of ex effort and expense as it uh, possible okay so these three things we need to keep these three things in mind because there will be several different types of markers but uh, having this all criteria and depending upon those criteria we limit those marker genes and we limit the use of those marker genes for example here you can see a marker gene uh, which is GFP here you can see another type of marker gene luciferase enzyme so all these uh, type of marker genes are very very useful very very handy these are also reporters so these reporters are really important why because uh, this GFP as you know uh, the expression of GFP lead up to the formation of green fluorescent protein and this protein will fluoresce when we give the fluorescence light right so when you give uh, under UV sorry when you put uh, the cells after the expression when you put the cells on UV it will uh, emit the green fluorescent light by looking at it we can easily determine whether the presence or, or the expression of our product is actually happening or not so the assay is very very easy so it is highly sensitive the assay is very very easy and is, it is uh, also minimal cost effective so uh, this GFP is a very very important reported gene on the other hand luciferase 2 because as you can see uh, the expression of luciferase after the luciferase expression if we give the light it will express the activity so it will be very very easier to assay and the detection will be high sensitive so uh, fulfilling uh, most of the criteria is the first important thing of selecting the reporter gene for your experiment okay now these are some use of uh, reporter genes okay so these are the reporter gene types the substrate they utilize and the identification techniques that we can go with now these are the common uh, type of reporter genes we now use uh, like octopine synthase octopine is a hormone type uh, hormone like uh, molecule now this octopine synthase or OCS is important so what we can do yeah we, we can give the substrate uh, so this is a assay the enzymatic assay like we give the substrate arginine pyruvate and NADH and we give the, the expression we go for the expression what will happen we can identify uh, with the help of electrophoresis or the chromatography technique right after addition of all these things if we go through the electrophoresis or chromatography we can separate all this mole uh, all those chemicals according to the banding pattern we can find uh, the presence of our desired product same way nopaline synthesis or NOS can also be given in this case arginine is there and ADH is there but instead of pyruvate we are giving ketoglutarate in this case again the detection is uh, via electrophoresis or chromatography technique chloramphenicol acetyl transferase or CAT is a very very important reporter gene now what, what uh, we can do utilizing the CAT we give the C14 chloramphenicol and also acetyl CoA uh, by giving them we can separate them via the TLC uh, or TLC separation and we go, we go through this uh, autoradiography and we can see the presence of the spots utilizing this and then uh, beta glucuronidase or gas this is a very very important one beta glucuronidase uh, so what we can do is in this case we give the substrate glucuronides now onto the glucuronides beta glucuronidase can act sorry again it can act and it it can convert this glucuronides into other compounds and as it is com uh, changing the compounds it will produce something fluorescence so we can uh, detect the fluorescence activity for that okay so we can determine the fluorescence activity by determining the fluorescence activity and the percentage of fluorescent we can actually tell uh, what kind of uh, expression we are dealing with I if uh, at all the expression is happening and if it is happened then in what amount it is happening okay 
Firefly Lucifer is also important, which is LUC. Uh, Firefly Lucifer is in this case we must provide the ATP and oxygen and luciferin because luciferin is an important substrate for luciferase to act with and then it will generate the uh, luminescence and we can detect this bioluminescence. And GFP, we have talked about it before. No substrate is actually required, just attach GFP with your desired gene and then expression is done. After the expression, you can expose your. Uh, uh, we can go with uh, the fluorescent microscopy or uh, also we can go with the fluorescence detection utilizing fluorometer and we can see the emission of fluorescence and by looking at it we can actually tell whether the expression is happened or not.